Hello, I'm Atuba Judge and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, can we call for that daily bread? Believe in your heart that those words coming out of your mouth as a request to the Lord will surely come to pass. If it's going to come to pass, that means he heard you. Praise God. And remember what his Jesus said, if we pray according to his will, he hears us. John actually said it. If we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, then we know we have our petition granted. So now, Jesus told us to pray this prayer. When we pray this prayer, you don't have any doubt in your heart that you are praying according to his will. So if we're praying according to his will, he has heard us. And if he has heard your request, then you know you have that request granted. It's as simple as that. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So now, are you ready? Say with me, Father, I receive now my request for today's daily bread is coming to me all things I need for today I receive from you in Jesus name amen praise God thank you Holy Spirit we are talking about entering God's rest and I pray that your heart will be open indeed for this so yesterday I was talking to you about how to receive faith. So you will mix it with the preaching. Taking our text from Hebrews chapter 4, especially verse 2. So for indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them who heard it. So they heard the preaching. But there was an ingredient that is missing. That's what I'm talking to you about. You must put this ingredient to the message that you have been that you have been preached to or you have received through the preaching of the gospel. You must mix it with this ingredient of faith. And yesterday I was describing, practically describing to you how faith comes, how you prepare yourself to receive faith. Now you take these things to the Lord and you begin to confess and you begin to uh, uh, meditate on them. I told you different types of meditation yesterday. While you are doing that, then the voice of God will come. Now when we say the voice of God come, it's not everybody that will hear that audible voice. Now you turn and say, yes, who's speaking? It might be so. You see, it's not about how people describe God spoke to them. The most important thing is the knowledge that God has spoken to you. So you don't have to copy another person. You don't have to say, ah, that's pastor. He says anytime God wants to talk to him, his right ear used to tingle. He will not know it is God. It might not be the same for you. And you see, the voice of God is... is don't ever think God is hiding his voice from you. He knows you need it. And this is one funny thing in truth. It's not only those who have been born again that hear the voice of God. Unbelievers, I mean those who are not born again, they hear God. Yes, because if you don't hear God, you can't be born again. Oh, that's true. If you don't hear God, you can never be born again. And believe me, there are people that don't hear God at all. They don't. Now, I'm not saying go crucify yourself. Say, I don't think I hear God, so that means I can never be born again. No, understand, understand what I'm teaching you. There are people who can never hear God. And because they can never hear God, they can never be born again. And there are people who can never be born again. Of course, yes, there are people who will never be born again. There are people who can never be born again. Go listen to the preachings of Jesus. You will understand. Praise God. It's obvious. Jesus actually gave the reason he always taught in parables. Because there are people, he said he didn't want them to see, hear, or understand what he's saying. So he codes it from them. So that's why he taught in parables. 
when he walked this earth. So he was hiding the word from them because they, if they see, hear, and understand, they will change. And when they change, I will be forced to heal them or rather receive them. So there are people Jesus doesn't want to receive. That's another day's talk. Praise God. But, but, but hear me. People who are not born again hear the voice of God. How much more then when you have deliberately, consciously received Christ into your life and then you are seeking, see, you are seeking his ways. You are seeking to understand it. Why then would he hide his voice from you? So one of the simplest things to receive is the voice of God. The voice of God conveys the word of God. See? So what, I'm, I'm trying to simplify this thing. So you see it in practical terms, how this thing works. So you get yourself in position to receive the word of God by the voice of God. So it can come by the audible voice. It can come by the inward witness in your heart. It can come by, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's scriptures being highlighted. You're studying the Bible. And, and I say the Spirit of God will lead you. Because so, sometimes um, you, you are praying and you start hearing a phrase in your heart. It says sanctification. Now, you know you are not thinking of sanctification. You're not talking about sanctification. You just keep hearing sanctification, sanctification. Like, why am I thinking sanctification? And then maybe something else is added to it. Like, oh, what's the scripture that talks about sanctification? Okay, let me look for it. And then you get your Bible and look for it. And then you see that scripture. Maybe you search for it. You see that scripture. Then the next thing you realize, your eye goes to the next scripture that he is pointing out there. You know, these days we use electronic, uh, mostly electronic Bibles. So you, you, you see another scripture that gets your interest. And then you open that scripture like, whoa, wow. And for some reason, that will never leave your mind. You see, now the voice of God have come to you. So when we say the voice of God, you don't say, my soul, listening to my voice. No. The voice of God conveys the word of God. And hear me, the voice of God is not like God speaks, shouts from heaven, and then you hear from him. <laughs> no, he speaks right in our hearts. You remember the Garden of Eden. The Bible said the voice of God came walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Have you ever tried to imagine what that meant? <laughs> Praise God. This is the word of God came walking in the wilderness. Now, here is how you know that it is the voice of God coming to you. For example, when, when, when you, you're studying the scriptures and it, it just highlighted one, one phrase or something just, you know, beep, you, you know what I'm talking about if you've experienced it. And if you've never experienced this, I pray by reason of you listening to this message now, the Spirit of God will carry into those experiences. Praise God. So it's highlighted. And then while you're looking at it, it begins to open up. It begins to open up. You now begin to hear. You see? You begin to hear. So be careful. Don't just jump and, hey, you know, hey, I heard something, I heard something, I heard something. You know, like some people like, oh, you just want to, no. Don't act like Samuel. Samuel, Sam yay, sir, Ella, you called me. No, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. Samuel said, hey, sir, you called me. I surely had, no, I didn't call. Then he said, the next time you hear that voice, this is how to respond. The next time he heard it, he responded in obedience. God, guess what happened? Then God began to speak to him. So the word of God was not just Samuel, Samuel. God wanted to tell him things. So sometimes you just hear a phrase and then you run around telling him, oh, I heard God, I heard God. He didn't even wait for him to tell you the substance of what he wanted to tell you. You see that? So I was telling yesterday about how you pray. You know, you, you, you're meditating, either silently or muttering it or roaring it. Roaring it is when you are declaring it in prayer. See that? Now, while you're doing all that, a time comes when you wait to receive. 
Then you hear him. He will speak to you. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And you must learn to write. Because now you're reading or you're meditating. And then the next thing, like, if you will keep my word that I have spoken to you today. Now that you're not reading that from anywhere now. See, the voice of God is coming to you. Now what happens afterwards? The faith you have been waiting for has come. Now you were looking at and, and meditating on the preaching that you have received concerning that thing. It could be a divine, it could be divine on divine help, divine provision, carry, whatever it is. You're, you're looking, you're looking at those scriptures. Those scriptures are the preachings that have been preached concerning that thing. And while you're doing that, the word of God comes to you. Mm. From that moment, faith has come. Now, the fact that faith has come doesn't mean the miracle will happen immediately. Say, ah, I thought that was the end. No. When faith comes, you have to now receive faith. How do you receive faith? That word that came to you, combined with the preaching that you have been meditating on, should do one main work in you. And what is that change your thinking. Now that's how you receive the vo voice of God. That's how you receive the word of God. That's how you receive the me me message of God. It changes your thoughts. It changes your thinking. It changes your action. I'll give you an example. Someone has offended you. And you've decided you're going to take certain actions against that person. You know, now these are things you face every day. Say, so I'm going to go to that person and I'm going to tell him my mind. Or I'm going to write him and tell him, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut off this. I'm going to report him here. I'm going to do all this stuff. And while you're preparing to go, suddenly the word of the Lord comes to you. And God begins to speak to you. And suddenly, the thought comes to you. Jesus said, if someone slaps you on the right side, turn the other cheek for you to slap. Hmm. Why? Why am I thinking this now? Then your mind now goes, it's related to this. Ah, no, 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 no way. Like, like, I won't do that. No, eh, no. I'm, I'm, I've got to show this person. I've got to teach this person a lesson. And then the word of God comes again. Hmm. Vengeance is mine. I'll repay. Okay, Lord. Vengeance is yours. You repay. If someone slaps you on this side, turn the other side. Oh, that's because vengeance is yours. Oh, yeah, that's why he said we shouldn't re respond. But you will respond to it. You respond for our sake. Okay, Lord, sometimes these things are hard, but this is your word. And I've got to receive it. And then you begin to pray. And then you begin to pray. And then you begin to pray. Then the word of the Lord comes to you. And says, if you continue walking like this and obeying my word, I'm going to set you on high and lift you up above all those people. See, now what's going on? The word of God has come. Now, you now look at that word. So God says, if I, if I do this, he will do this for me. You are now mixing that up. So what happens? You finish all that experience. Like, mm -hmm. I was about to go and deal with somebody like that. Ah, there's no point. There's no point. Father, I roll the concerns of this person and what he has done. I roll everything over to you. And I let you be the judge, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. And then you begin to search your hearts. Am I still angry with this person? Nah. 
No, I'm not angry with that. No, 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 I don't, I don't feel any anger anymore. What if you see the person now? Will you hug the person? Yeah. Um, maybe I've not gotten there yet. But I believe so. You see that? Now, what has happened? The word of God has changed your mindset. It didn't just make you weak. It changed your mindset. Because now, the reason you're not taking any action against that person is because you believe that God is going to take an action where this situation is concerned. And let me use this opportunity to explain this. The action of God is not necessarily to punish that person. That that's a negative way people think most times. So because someone has offended me and God said I should not react, he will take care of it. Now, him taking care of it doesn't mean I should not be waiting to see that that person is flogged one day. And the person will not come to me and say, hey, I don't know, since I offended you, I'll be suffering. I'll say, yeah, and I know next time not to offend me. Oh, my God, I've fought for me. My God, I've dealt with you. No, not necessarily. I always tell people this. See, it is easier for you to respond to God and for your enemy or those who you think are your enemies to respond to God where you are concerned. See that? It's easy for now, the person has done what they've done. I've turned to the Lord and I've rolled the care over to the Lord. It's easy for God to say, my son, my daughter, come. I want to elevate you to a place where that person will not touch you anymore. Oh, really? Thank you, Lord. And then he elevates you. It's easier for you to respond to God. See? Now, God can go to that person that hurts you. I say, look, you hurt my son. I'm going to deal with you. And the person says, oh God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's a response. I hope you know that. That's a response. And the person says, oh, I'm sorry, God, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was your son. I'm sorry. And God says, hmm, just like Ahab. You remember Ahab and Nebot? See how he has repented. I won't punish him again. So what becomes of you, who you are always waiting for a bad thing to happen to that person? Very unnecessary. Very unnecessary. So you see, faith changes your mindset and that's how you know the word of God has begun to work in you. And guess what? You sure know that your elevation is coming. You sure know that it is time to enter into God's rest. Why? Because your action, and this is one thing about faith, faith must carry a corresponding action. James spoke about it. It's a faith without works is dead. Now, what does it mean faith without works is that faith without a corresponding action is dead. So here am I. The word of God has come to me. That is faith. What is my corresponding action? I boasted yesterday that I'm going to deal with that person today. Everybody watch out. But after the word of God came to me, now everybody's wondering, ah, I thought, said, no, I'm not going to do it again. Ah, why? I'll let God take care of it. See, that was your corresponding action to the faith that came to you. Are you seeing that? Now, I, 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 I hope you're understanding how faith comes to you. Now, this can be in any situation at all. The same principle. Faith comes, then there must be a physical action of yours to show that faith came inside. Praise God. My time is up. I hope you're really learning. I would like to hear from you if this message has been a blessing to you. Send us a message. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.